Hello grade 11s and welcome back to this topic on quantitative aspects of chemical change. In today's lesson, we will investigate moles in chemical reactions. Let us join Keke as she works through this lesson. In today's lesson, we're going to show you that baking isn't only like chemistry, but that there's some very important actual chemistry happening every time you bake something. One of the key ingredients in many cakes, breads and scones is baking powder. The main ingredient of baking powder is sodium hydrogen carbonate. This compound is also called sodium bicarbonate or bicarbonate of soda. Baking powder also contains tartaric acid. When mixed with liquid ingredients, the bicarbonate of soda reacts with the tartaric acid to produce lots of tiny bubbles of carbon dioxide. When the mixture is heated, the sodium bicarbonate decomposes to produce more bubbles of carbon dioxide. This causes the cake mixture to rise evenly while baking and is the reason why there are so many little air holes in the bread or cake. In this lesson, we are going to investigate the chemistry that happens during baking by looking at the thermal decomposition of sodium bicarbonate and the reaction of sodium bicarbonate with acid in the lab. We will then use our knowledge of the relationships between mass, moles and volume to make some predictions about the amount of product that will form in each experiment. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to apply your knowledge of mole relationships to predict the amount of product formed during a reaction. Let's begin by investigating the thermal decomposition of sodium bicarbonate. The first thing we need to do is identify the products formed in this reaction. Have a careful look at this animation that shows what happens during the reaction. When sodium bicarbonate is heated over a Bunsen burner, a gas is released and the sides of the test tube become moist. Based on the elements that make up sodium bicarbonate, sodium, hydrogen, carbon and oxygen, Chemists predict that the moisture will be water, the gas will be carbon dioxide and the product left in the test tube will be sodium carbonate. Now, using my knowledge of moles, I'm going to try and work out the mass of sodium carbonate produced when 4,2 grams of sodium bicarbonate decompose, while you go to the lab to see what the actual amount of product is that forms as Aaron does the experiment. I'll see you later and then we can compare our results. Hi guys, in this experiment I've weighed 4,2 grams of sodium bicarbonate and now I'm going to heat it over here. Now watch carefully what happens to the bicarbonate as I heat. If you look here, I've connected this pipe onto the mouth of the flask and I'm bubbling the gas in lime water. I'm going to continue to heat the flask until all the bubbling in the lime water is finished. Now notice here, there's some liquid condensed around the mouth of the flask. Now remember, we're expecting that to be water. Now I can test this liquid using anhydrous copper sulfate which will turn blue in the presence of water. It's important that I continue to heat the flask until I have the solid completely dry. I'm just gonna take it back onto the burner. Now that our soil is completely dry, I'm going to reweigh it and see how much of the sodium carbonate is left. You can see that it's 2,25 grams. Okay, let's go back to the studio and see how this answer compares to the theoretical answer from Gege's calculations. Well, I've been quite busy. Let me show you my theoretical answer. 
The first thing I did was to write down the balanced chemical equation for the decomposition reaction. If you look at the equation, you will notice that we have a 2 in front of sodium bicarbonate. This means that two particles of sodium bicarbonate decompose to give one particle of sodium carbonate. One molecule of carbon dioxide and one molecule of water. It's impossible to do this reaction with just one particle, so we can think of these numbers as the ratio of the moles reacting. Two moles of sodium bicarbonate will react to form one mole of each of the products. But we did not start with two moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate. We started with 4,2 grams. So the next step in my calculation was to find the number of moles present at the start. Can you see how I worked this out? First I found that the molar mass of sodium bicarbonate is 84 grams per mole. Then I used the relationship between number of moles and mass and substituted the values into the equation. This shows that 4,2 grams of sodium bicarbonate is exactly 0,05 moles. So now I can use the ratio of moles from the balanced equation 2 is to 1 to predict that if I have 0,05 moles to start, then in the product I will form half this number of moles, 0,025 moles. Finally, I calculated the theoretical mass of sodium carbonate formed in this reaction. First, you have to find the molar mass of sodium carbonate. This works out to 106 grams per mole. Remember, we already know that the number of moles is 0,025 moles. We are now ready to find the mass of the product. We can use the equation small m equals the number of moles n times the molar mass capital M. By substituting in the values, I have found that 2,65 grams of sodium carbonate should be formed. This theoretical mass is only slightly more than the mass of product Aaron obtained. We call the amount of product formed the yield. The percentage yield tells us about the ratio between the actual mass of product and the theoretical mass of product. In this case, we have 2,25 grams divided by 2,65 grams times 100. That is a percentage yield of 84,9%. There are a number of reasons why this percentage is not 100%. Can you think of any? Well, often the main reason for a lower yield is errors in measuring. All equipment has a certain level of accuracy, and there may also be human error too. If you ever have the chance to do this sort of investigation, the percentage yield will give you an idea of how carefully you've worked. You may even find that you get a yield of more than 100%, but this would also be an error. The product most probably still contains some water and is not totally dry. If you get a yield less than 100%, there may still be a small amount of reactant that has not decomposed yet. It's important to check that no gas is coming off the heated test tube when you stop heating. A third source of error is the purity of the original sodium hydrogen carbonate. If the 4,2 grams of reactant was not 100% pure, we will not get close to 100% yield. Chemists use percentage yield as an important measure of the purity of the samples they are working with. For example, they may not know exactly how much gold is found in a sample of rock. But by doing an experiment like the one we just did, they can determine if it will be economically worthwhile to mine the area the sample was taken from. Often more than one test is to be done in order to reduce experimental errors. But now it's time for us to do one more reaction with our bicarbonate of soda. This time we're going to add a volume of hydrochloric acid to 1,68 gram sample of sodium bicarbonate. 
we'll collect and measure the volume of gas produced. But before we do the investigation, we need to write down the balanced chemical equation so we can work out how much acid we will need to completely react with the sodium bicarbonate. See if you can write down the balanced chemical equation. When sodium hydrogen carbonate reacts with hydrochloric acid, it forms a salt, sodium chloride, carbon dioxide and water. So the balanced chemical equation is Na HCO3 plus HCl reacts to form NaCl plus CO2 plus H2O. Next we need to do some calculations. Remember we are using 1,68 grams of sodium bicarbonate for this reaction. Let's find out how many moles we have. We already know that the molar mass of sodium bicarbonate is 84 grams per mole. So the number of moles present is 0, 0,02 moles. Now from the balanced equation, I can see that one mole of sodium bicarbonate reacts with one mole of hydrochloric acid to give one mole of sodium chloride, one mole of water and one mole of carbon dioxide. Because the ratio is 1 is to 1, 0, 0,02 moles of sodium bicarbonate will require 0, 0,02 moles of acid to give 0, 0,02 moles of each of the products. The hydrochloric acid you will normally find in the lab is a 0, 0,5 molar concentration solution. Remember, this means that in one decimeter cubed of this solution, there are 0, 0,5 moles of HCl present. I can use this information to work out the exact volume of acid required for our reaction. If I change the subject of the formula C equals N divided by V to volume, I can substitute in the values to get 0, 0,04 decimeters cubed which is 40 centimeters cubed of standard hydrochloric acid needed to complete our experiment. You know, if we look at the ratio of our balanced equation again and we apply Avogadro's principle, we can even predict what size container we will need to collect the gas. Check it out. Can you see that the theoretical yield of carbon dioxide will be 0, 0,02 moles? We can convert this to a volume measure if the conditions are at STP. We use the equation V equals the number of moles times the molar volume, 22,4 decimeters cubed. This means we need a container that can hold 448 centimeters cubed. Now let's go to the lab and see if our predictions are correct. Thank you, Gege, for doing all those calculations that have helped me set up my apparatus. I weighed out exactly 1,68 grams of sodium bicarbonate in this large test tube and placed a two-hole stopper in the test tube. I inserted this dropper funnel into the one hole and connected a tube to the other. The tube goes under this large measuring cylinder which I filled with water. I've measured out exactly 40 centimeters cubed of 0,5 molar hydrochloric acid and I'm just about ready to start the reaction. Now, when the acid reacts with sodium hydrogen carbonate, the carbon dioxide bubbles through this tube into the measuring cylinder and push out the water, and then we will be able to measure the volume of gas collected. Here we go. Wow, look at all the gas collected. It's about 440 centimeters cubed. That's quite close to the theoretical value. So, I think doing calculations has helped us complete this experiment. Now guys, remember, these chemical calculations are not just theoretical. They help chemists do very important practical investigations every day. Thank you, KK. 
it has been so interesting to see the use of the balanced chemical equation and the use of its mole ratio to determine quantities of substances in a chemical reaction. That's all for today, Grade 11s. Don't forget to try the task video at the end of this series. You can also find out more information on this topic at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Join me in the next lesson when we study the application of more relationships. Until then, goodbye.